Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. More on them a little bit later on. In the next couple of months, I'm planning on traveling to Asia for the very first time, more specifically to Japan, a place that I have always fantasy visiting, but nothing is set in stone yet. It might not even happen. I haven't booked the flights, I haven't booked the hotel. I've only just really started doing the research, but me being me, I already know what would be in my camera bag. At least I've got the essentials sorted. Now bear with me, because this does have some relevance to the topic we're going to be talking about today, because it's interesting. When I go traveling, I'm planning on bringing a full frame camera and an APS-C camera, but this presented me with a bit of a dilemma, because I don't have the weight capacity to be able to bring both full frame and APS-C lenses for each system, and plus it's kind of impractical to bring both anyway. So ultimately, I decided that I'll prioritize full frame lenses because I could just use them on my APS-C camera and that's what got me to make this video to answer a common question I get asked and that is can you use full frame lenses on APS-C cameras and the short answer is yes absolutely you can. However, there are both pros and cons to doing so, which is what I'm going to be sharing with you throughout today's video. So stick around to the end if you want to find out if it's worth buying full frame lenses for your APS-C camera or if you should just stick to buying APS-C lenses. The way I like to describe using full frame lenses on an APS-C camera is kind of bizarre because how I see it is you've got a teleconverter already pre-built into your camera so you can get extra reach. It's like a permanent buff. As I said, it's kind of bizarre. But to elaborate on what I mean by that in a bit more detail, anytime you use a full frame lens on an APS-C camera, you have to times that focal length by 1.5 times. So let's take this Sigma 24-70 as an example here. You put this on an APS-C camera, the equivalent focal length will be 36 to 105. A 35mm prime will become a 52mm prime, an 85mm prime will become a whopping 127mm prime. And when it comes to telephoto lenses, this is where we see some big jumps in focal length. So let's take the beastly 70-200 Mark II from Sony. You put this on an APS-C camera, the equivalent focal length is now 105 to 300 millimeters. That is just bonkers and could be hugely beneficial if you're planning on shooting sports or maybe wildlife photography. A misconception of using full frame glass on an APS-C camera is your image quality is going to decrease, when in actual fact, from my experience, the opposite is true to that. In general, most if not all lenses are sharpest in the center, so an APS-C camera bypasses any of the imperfections in the corners, and the results do speak for themselves. I have been able to take absolutely incredible photos combining the Sony a6400 with full frame glass, that be the Sigma 20 for the 70, the Sigma 85 f1.4, or heck, even the Sony 70-200. Just look at how razor sharp these photos are. Stunning. And before I forget to mention, the autofocus for photography and video isn't affected with these kind of combos, from my experience at least. So if I do go traveling, I'm going to have no concerns with the image quality or autofocus. I know it's going to deliver, and it's going to deliver good. With this being the email, you have an array of lenses to choose from. You're kind of sport for choice, and you're not just restricted with Sony branded lenses, unlike some other camera manufacturers. <laughs> Canon! Sorry, had a bit of a sorry in my throat there. With the e-mount, you have Tamron, Samyang, Zeiss, Viltrox, and Sigma. So choices on top of choices on top of choices. If anything, we've got too many choices. That's not always a bad thing, though. No. I don't think so anyway. Can get confusing but that does bring us on to pro number four better compatibility as i've made abundantly clear in this video we can use full frame lenses on aps-c cameras are we still following that concept because weirdly the more i repeat that the less believable it becomes if you start out in photography or filmmaking with an aps-c camera but use full frame lenses you're better equipped for the future because if you ever decide to make that full transition from aps-c to full frame you won't have to sell your lenses if you know that in the near future you are going to be making that transition from aps-c cameras to full 
full frame, then going the route of buying a couple of full frame lenses could be a good shout because in the long run, you'll save yourself time and possibly money as well. Now, just before we get onto the cons, I would like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring today's video. The first 500 people to click on the link in the description of this video can start exploring their creativity with a one month free membership. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning with thousands of classes and members across 150 countries. Skillshare offers a huge variety of classes to fit anyone's needs and it's the perfect place to get started from photography to illustration to graphic design, freelance, no matter what it is, Skillshare has you covered. A class I've enjoyed taking is YouTube success, script, shoot and edit with MKBHD. One of the biggest tech YouTubers out there has his own class on Skillshare that you can learn from. As someone who continues to grow their own YouTube channel, I find this one super educational and insightful. Skillshare can help you make 2024 a new year of learning, growth and connection through creativity. And if you don't know where to start, Skillshare can help you with that. With their learning paths, you can find exactly where to start your learning journey so you have a clear direction to achieve your goals. A great learning path that I can recommend is Grow Your First YouTube Channel, which is ideal for people wanting to kickstart their own channel in 2024 but don't know where or how to begin. So shout out to Skillshare and a massive thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so what are some of the reasons not to use full frame lenses on APS-C bodies? Depending on the full frame lens you're planning on picking up, you may experience a massive shift of imbalance at the front of your setup, and if that's the case, it could just become a burden to carry about. If you're a pro shooter, you probably won't even notice, but if you're a casual shooter, maybe you're on vacation somewhere, walking around some places, this will become apparent after some time, and it's not a lot of fun to deal with. But not to worry though, because there is most likely an APS-C equivalent to that full frame lens that will give the same amount of range and feel way more balanced and lightweight. Two fantastic examples examples here is the Sigma 24-70 f2.8, the APS-C equivalent for that being the mighty Sigma 18-50 f2.8 and the Sigma 85 f1.4 with the APS-C equivalent of that being the super duper Sigma 56 f1.4. One of the biggest downsides I see with using full frame lenses on APS-C cameras is because of that 1.5 times crop, you are gonna lose that wide angle. Even if you have something ridiculous like the Sony 12 to 24 mm lens, even on the widest end, your minimum focal length is still going to be 18 millimeters. So whilst yes, you do get that extra telephoto reach by using full frame lenses, you do sacrifice wide angled shooting capabilities, which I think for some people is gonna be a big deal including myself if i do go to japan at the widest focal length i'm gonna have on my crop sensor camera is 36 mil courtesy of the 24 to 70 and that's not wide enough so i ended up actually picking up a 10 to 18 just so i can achieve some of those wide angled shots and the final con with full frame lenses is that a lot of the time they'll be significantly more expensive than their APS-C equivalents so taking another look at the examples i presented earlier as well as the weight difference being huge so are the prices the sigma 24 to 70 costs around 1049 pounds and the Sigma 18-50 around £429. So that's just over a £600 price difference. That is huge and it's a similar story if you look at the 85 compared to the 56. If we were just to base this purely on price alone, then in most scenarios, people would be better off buying APS-C lenses for their APS-C cameras over full frame ones. To reiterate a point I made earlier, if you know you're going to be making that transition from full frame to APS-C in the not so distant future, then I would say yes, invest into full frame glass now rather than later. However, if you're not planning on making that transition to full frame anytime soon, then stick with your guns. Go with those APS-C lenses because they are absolutely fantastic. They're sharp, they're fast, they're more affordable, more lightweight, and probably more effective for your creative process. But there is just one thing I want to add, and that is invest well into lenses because cameras are temporary they're always being updated with new features and new tech i mean sony released a new camera every fortnight since starting this video they've probably released a new one so they are temporary but great glass lasts forever and to be fair great glass can always breathe new life into an older camera body. And speaking of which, if you want to start photography, but you're on a bit of a budget, then definitely check out this top video right here. Or if you fancy seeing a street POV with a full frame lens and an APS-C camera, then definitely check out this bottom video right here. And with all that said, I'll hopefully see you in the next one. And I should really probably get on with booking that Japan trip now.
1,000 likes and I'll do it immediately. No, I'll probably do it anyway. I should really go though. Like, imagine the photography. It'd be insane.